When you plan a flight, it's essential you use the most current information available. This program introduces the common reference sources used for flight planning and briefly explains how to interpret them. The sources we'll look at are the Federal Aviation Regulations, the Aeronautical Information Manual, Airport Facility Directory, Advisory Circulars, and Jeppesen Pilot Resource Services. Some of these publications give you very specific information, while others give general operational data. Let's begin with one which contains specific information, the Federal Aviation Regulations. A few of the areas you should be familiar with are Part 1, Definitions and Abbreviations. Part 61, Certification of Pilots and Flight Instructors. And Part 91, General Operating and Flight Rules. Due to the ongoing changes in the FARs, it's important that you have access to current editions and review them periodically. Another publication you should be familiar with is the Aeronautical Information Manual, or AIM. This publication is your official guide to basic flight information and ATC procedures. It covers a wide range of topics and helps keep you informed about operating in the national airspace system. Let's look at some of the items of particular interest to VFR pilots. The chapter on navigation aids describes in detail the various types of facilities that are available to both VFR and IFR pilots. For example, the section on VORs explains the frequency range of your VOR receiver and tells how to check its operation. If you plan on flying after sunset, you should be familiar with information in the chapter on aeronautical lighting. Things like specific airport and obstruction lighting are explained in detail. The different types of airport markings and signs are also covered. The chapter on airspace describes the various forms of controlled, uncontrolled, and special use airspace and their operational requirements. Since portions of this chapter are changed frequently, it's a good idea to review it periodically. The air traffic control chapter contains a section on radio communications. It explains the terms and phrases used by pilots and controllers during ground and flight operations. Another section, entitled Airport Operations, explains the correct procedures for operating on or near an airport. The Emergency Procedures chapter contains valuable information regarding the authority and responsibility of the pilot in command, the services available from air traffic control, distress and urgency procedures, and rules governing two-way radio communications failure. The AIM also covers several medical facts that relate to pilots, such as the effects of alcohol, over-the-counter medication, high altitude flight, and vision and illusions in flight. The Pilot Controller Glossary is an important supplement to the AIM. It provides definitions for most of the terms used in the ATC system. When everyone uses the same language, misunderstandings are minimized. Now let's look at the Airport Facility Directory. This publication contains facts about all public-use airports, heliports, and seaplane bases. It is published in a number of volumes, with each one covering several states in a given region. To help explain the contents, let's look at some typical entries from the Southwest Directory. Each volume has a directory legend that helps you interpret the abundance of information. As you gain more experience in using the Airport Facility Directory, you'll find the entries easy to read. For example, here is the listing for Centennial Airport, which is one of several airports in the Denver area. We won't cover every entry in this listing, but we'll look at a few items that are pertinent to VFR operations. Centennial Airport is located three miles southeast of the city of Denver. This gives you a general area in which to look for the airport as you approach the city. 
The elevation of Centennial is 5,883 feet. This is useful for determining such things as the traffic pattern altitude, the upper dimension of the Class D airspace, and the accuracy of your altimeter. The letter B indicates that Centennial has a rotating beacon. This information can be very helpful when trying to locate the airport at night. These entries show the services which you can obtain at Centennial. S4 means major airframe and power plant repairs are available. If your airplane develops mechanical problems, you can get it fixed at this airport. The types of aviation fuel available are 100 low lead and Jet A. This information is important when you select an airport for a fuel stop. OX means oxygen and the numbers refer to the types of recharging or replacement services available. Runway data are also covered in this section. In addition to basic dimensions and lighting, it includes specific information about each runway. Runway 17 right, for example, has a right-hand traffic pattern. This is a very important fact that helps you anticipate pattern entry instructions from the controller. Obstructions are also listed, such as the pole on the approach end of runway 35 left. The airport remarks section contains operational information about the status and usability of the airport. For example, there is a caution about waterfowl on and near the airport. As you approach or depart the airport, you should remain alert for bird activity. A bird strike can severely damage an airplane. Some of the additional remarks that relate to Centennial are that the airport is attended continuously. There are men and equipment working on ramp A. And there are noise abatement procedures. The remaining sections of the directory listing for Centennial include weather data sources, communications information, and a listing of the various radio aids. Under the listing for the Denver Vortac is a note to see the special notices. This section of the airport facility directory covers a wide variety of subjects that might affect your flight. Here is the entry referred to in the listing for the Denver Vortac. The DME feature of the Vortac may not be usable due to an overload of interrogations. This may influence your ability to use DME to locate Centennial Airport. A list of parachute jumping areas is included in another section of the airport facility directory. A section that should always be checked before a flight is the aeronautical chart bulletin. It lists the changes that have occurred since the last printing of your aeronautical chart. Another method of supplying you with time-critical flight planning information is through the Notices to Airmen System, or NOTAMs. There are three basic types, NOTAM Ds, NOTAM Ls, and FDC NOTAMs. NOTAM Ds cover such items as inoperative nav aids, or runway closures at all public use airports. These NOTAMs are distributed from the National Communications Center. NOTAM Ls cover things like taxiway closures, ramp closures, and mowing operations, and are distributed only by local flight service stations. FDC NOTAMs are more likely to affect you when you get into more advanced flying. They usually amend instrument approach procedures and instrument charts. You can get NOTAM information from a flight service station, a computer briefing service, or the Notices to Airmen publication. Let's turn our attention now to another source of aviation information, the Advisory Circular, or AC. Advisory circulars contain information and procedures which are necessary for good operating practice, but which are non-binding unless they're incorporated into a regulation. ACs range in size from a single page document to full textbook length and are issued as the need arises. They are numbered to correspond with the various FAR parts and subchapter titles. For example, the general subject number 60 pertains to airmen, and a specific number within the 60 series, such as 61, 
identifies subjects relating to the certification of pilots and flight instructors. One of these ACs, 6112, answers many of the questions you might have prior to or during your flight training. Knowing the general subject numbers will enable you to find ACs on a given topic much easier. A listing of all the ACs and their current status can be obtained from the advisory circular checklist. Also included in this checklist is a listing of FAA publications sold by the government printing office. A couple of these are the FAA computerized testing supplements and the practical test standards. You can order a free copy of the AC checklist from the address listed at the beginning of the AIM. Jeppesen Pilot Resource Services provide excellent reference sources. They combine many of the features found in the AIM and Airport Facility Directory into one publication. In addition, they include all of the pertinent FARs. The loose leaf format allows you to easily insert revisions, which makes them some of the most current publications available. Let's take a look at some of the service features. Jeppesen Pilot Resource Services are divided into several subject areas. Common information is grouped together and identified by divider tabs for easy reference. For example, the section on air navigation radio aids presents detailed information about the types of navigational facilities available. A comprehensive GPS Loran coordinate directory contains latitude and longitude coordinates for airports, nav aids, and waypoints. Airport locations include an FAA airport identifier as well as the airport reference point coordinates. Another listing gives airports by the three-letter identifier. Navigation aid locations are also listed by name and identifier. Waypoint locations are listed by name. A unique feature of Pilot Resource Services is the FAR component. It provides the regulations pertinent to a wide variety of operations, including hazardous materials carried by aircraft, and the National Transportation Safety Board regulations. Another very helpful component of Pilot Resource Services is the airport directory. It lists over 6,000 civil and military airports that are open to the public. In addition to the normal airport data, VFR entries contain an airport diagram to help you recognize the airport more easily from the air. Only the pertinent operational data is included for IFR airports, since detailed charts are available in airway manual service. You might think of the airport directory as an airport facility directory with pictures. This program has provided a brief overview of the sources of flight information used during your pre-flight planning. It is your responsibility, as pilot in command, to familiarize yourself with every aspect of the flight and to ensure your planning is based on the most current information available.